which is the best race for Tactician Baldur's Gate 3. So you guys really loved my last video about the best class um, and of course the natural progression now is to discuss the best race. So if you're new to this channel, I'm a game designer focused mostly on of course and combat design and especially in role playing games. So I love this min max and stuff and I bring it up because before we go into the race stuff, I want to explain specialization here. So I think it's very important to think about specialization when it comes to use character creation, min maxing right, just generally speaking, and also just game design in general. Let me say this thing here, not to be brag or whatever, but I have a master's degree in behavioral economy and game theory. So stuff like this is what I, I live and breathe for. So if you're interested in more of this stuff, leave a comment below, right? Because I can really go in deep in the math of video games. But anyway, so I bring up here then The Wealth of Nation, written by Adam Smith in the 18th century, because specialization is so important for games, I think, especially then, <laughs> funny joke, for you know how to like make the perfect character, right? And what I mean by that is that specialization is something where you focus on one thing, right? And I will explain to you how it works in the economy, very briefly, of course, like <laughs> in a minute, and how it's very, very affected, right, with game theory. And one reason it's very important how this economical stuff, there's a huge overlap between game theory and economy, right? And then of course also both player decision making, but also player stats, right? And the basis reason why, and how it comes back to Baldur's Gate 3 and D&D, &D, because the original D&D &D is actually based on old baseball board games, right? As you can see here, baseball board games are very similar to D&D, because they have different battery rate, different hit rate, they roll a die, right? Oh, will I hit the crit or miss the ball or whatever, right? So there is a lot of this whole like probability math and so on, is the bread and butter, right? Of, of course, video games. And especially, of course, the role-playing genre. So here we have England and Portugal. So England can produce one sheep and two ore per day. Portugal can do the opposite, right? Because they are not specialized in that. They're doing the best they can in everything. But as you can see, England is better at producing ore. So if they specialize instead, we get a lot more ore in England, right? And a lot more sheep in Portugal. Of course, now each country is only producing one, which it is. But it's a trade now, they both in total have a lot more stuff, right? This is the basic concept of wealth of nation, specialization, and of course also capitalism, honestly. But this, I think, is very important context for video games. So I'll give you a good video game example. So this here is Ken, of course, in Civil 6, played by Angry Bird, arguably the best player in the world. Which is an amazing player, right? Why do I bring up Street Fighter? So why do I bring Ken up? Well, I think Ken is a great example of specialization in video games. Because, first of all, I have to assume that everyone knows Street Fighter, right? But Evil Last Week and so on, but Street Fighter is like the famous fighting game. So Ken can throw the Hadouken, right? But he has the worst Hadouken in the game, the worst projectile, I think easily by none. Every character can't use projectile, but by the ones that can, he is the worst one ever. That being said, Ken is still like the best character in the game, or like second best or whatever, but he's like top tier character, absolutely. The reason why of course, is because he's very, very good at rushdown. He's very good at corner pressure, he's very hard to block him, he's very good at engaging so on, right? So basically, Ken is like a savvy economy, right? Ken is the focus on all, right? Instead of being somewhat good at everything, Ken is amazing at one thing, which he's just so good at, that if he sucks at everything else, it doesn't really matter, right? And of course, I'm gonna bring it back to the Ball's Gate now. When I look at how should I min-max my character, true for kind of any game, I think, where you have deck building or character building or so on, which of course is that it's usually better to have racial abilities that just makes you better at what you're really good at, if that makes any sense. The best example in Ball's Gate 3 is Orc. Right, so half orc. I'm gonna rank them very highly, of course. Spoilers coming to the TV soon because half orcs have okay, you you hit more in melee and then you have better crits, so all right. So they're very very good as long as you play in melee range. Of course, there's a specialization because they're not better at range, right? So you have to play them in melee. But if you have to pick a racial ability, absolutely is the orc one of the best, even the best race because yeah, they they actually really make you know, certain classes way better, right? Uh, where some of the other races are kind of like, oh, I'm kind of good at something a little bit here and there, 
that's just a weak edge stability. And I don't think actually the race are that balanced because, yeah, some of them are like, oh, I'm somewhat good at everything. Usually not the best. And I guess yesterday when I looked at my uh, class tea list, I said the fighter is pretty terrible. I think so because the fighter is like, kind of saying, right? The fighter has no real good ability. They kind of use like Yaksa for trade, but I guess that compared to the board, the board's also that, but it's better being there with magic because it gives you way more utility. With the fighter, is like, well, I'd rather have like a barbarian if I have a, you know, for damage or whatever, right? Or a monk or something. It's a little bit like, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a weakness, right? But anyway, hope you guys like the intro here. But let's start then, and I'm going to say me here, right, that half orc is like one of the best races. It's just straight up A tier or S tier race, right? I mentioned them in the sample, of course. And yeah, they have this amazing uh, savage thing that makes melee attacks way better, right? We, and also, of course, like the survivability thing, and also have dark vision and pretty good range one. Uh, and I also bring them up first here, because they kind of come into what I said earlier, right? That yeah, this is a race that doesn't really make you playing a ranged character better. Of course, there are some builds. You can play like a spell melee kind of character, right? But basically, so it's not really about spells, I guess, or physical stuff, but it's about melee, which is ranged, right? So as long as you play a melee half-orc, you have one of the best races, right? If you play a ranged half-orc, yeah, then obviously you have like a pretty terrible race. But as I said earlier, in the whole in the video, right, is that, well, yeah, the best races are gonna be the races that are giving you a lot of bonuses, right, for you specifically are playing as, because some of the other races are kind of a little bit, you know, mix of everything, right, is probably going to be, what I would say, situational, right? So the half-orc uh, doesn't have really situational, but they have dark vision, but I mean the other two, are, the other two much better passives are not situational, because you're always going to be a melee attacker, right, if as long as you play a melee class, of course, so the, and also the survivability, and this ability to get up again, the endurance, is always going to be useful, right? No matter what fight you're having in the game. So again, obviously, you know, this is, yeah. Like, <laughs> what more can I say? So let's start putting half orc in S tier then. Maybe they got A tier. But, you know, I already made the argument, right? They are the best, okay? They're, that's like an amazing specialized um, race. So by putting the orc really high, right, the half orcs, and maybe they go down later, but I feel the orcs are very, very powerful with the whole, you know, specialization of melee stuff, right? Now, I think we're gonna go over all the half stuff, so we're gonna do like elf, half elf, half draw, uh, human and so on, right, because you kind of like, you know, they, they share a lot of similarities, right? Over so the elf, right, we have the high elf or the wood elf. So the high elves are basically, you get a cantrip, where you can pick one spell, you can throw, right? So you get a fireball or aspot or whatever. And this is also somewhat the same thing later that the half elf has as well, right? Uh, and the wood elves are used really fast. I think the wood elves straight up are better because the wood elves uh, also have a little bit bonus, right? If you get a rogue and so on, right? Like the stealth stuff and you move really fast. I, I think I will value this, uh, be able to move better than having another spell because usually it's like, Oh, I can throw an ice bolt instead of a firebolt, right? But I, I can also throw the firebolt. Sure, the ice bolt might be more useful sometimes, but most of the time I feel like my main class abilities are is equally good, right? And I think that the otherwise is like if I'm playing a say a fighter or a barbarian, right? A high elf barbarian. Yes, I can throw like a cantrip or something. Like, but why do I want to do that? You know, sometimes I guess, but mostly you kind of want to punch stuff anyway, right? So I think it isn't really that useful. And again, then I'd rather play like a half orc, right? And I, I'm a better fighter, I'm a better barbarian, I'm a better paladin, whatever, because it kind of fits into what I'm doing, rather than, oh, I got like a, a, a bad spell that I might not be able to use. I'm start then by lifting up the elves. Now it's a little bit honestly hard what is what here. <laughs> but I think that the wood elves are better than the high elves. I hope this is the right symbol now, honestly. It's a little bit, the symbols are a little bit whatever, right? But I think this is how I start. And then when we get to the half stuff, right? This here is half high elf, half wood elf, half draw elf. And we can maybe do draw first, but let's maybe draw then. Uh, so I straight up think, generally speaking, that I find high elf, half elf thing then uh, worse because 
You get a little bit of that human stuff, which is like, oh, I can use some other stuff more. I can use like a shield that's decent or something, right? But you don't really benefit that much from it. Uh, and then again, yeah, the whole cantrip uh, isn't that powerful. I'd rather be half wood elf, so I'm faster, right? So I'm already like this. And um, then we had a draw, so with the two different draws. Let me first point out that the draw have two different sub races, right? You got the Lot Sworn draw or the Seldrin draw. It doesn't matter at all. They literally have no care at all. Generally, I don't get it. I think it's a little lazy in the game. I don't care that much, honestly, it doesn't matter. But, but it's a little bit like. So they both have the exact same bonuses, and then they will have the same spells on 3 and 5. I don't know, maybe they could have two different spells or whatever, right, on five or something. But they're literally exactly the same. So when you pick your draw, you can pick any uh, sub race for your draw. It's basically just like your fate, right? It's pure RP, yeah. It's pure RP, a little bit, I guess, of your appearance, but it's like, yeah, it's just pure RP. I, I do think, I, I have played a draw, but I guess that... I mean, I only played one draw race, right? Uh, but I suppose that some of your NPC options will be different of course depending if you're like evil or good draw kind of thing so that is true of course that like yeah that, that's true so there, there are difference to it right and honestly i don't know which is like the best npc draw but i i would guess they're roughly the same so these are the two uh draw things then and honestly they will have to be next other. they could be the same symbol right but again, I don't know if there is a huge NPC difference, but I think there are slight... There is probably one of them that are better. You can probably do the math and calculate exactly. I would actually guess the one is better than the other. But whatever, disregard that, uh, I suppose. And for me then, I would put these draws, again, they're the same, roughly here in B2. Because what the draw has is Fairy Fire on level 3, not that good. And then they have Darkness on level 5, which is pretty good. So they have this... A blinding spell, right? Which is powerful. I like the spell a lot. But there, I don't really, I don't rate the night vision power that highly, and that's kind of the same thing as the F has too. I don't think it's super useful. It is somewhat useful. It's very situational, right? It's either completely useless or not. Uh, again, compare that to like the barbarian. Oh, sorry, the half orc, whatever. The barbarian level, right? Half orcs melee bonus is useful in every fight, right? I keep saying it, but that's a massive benefit, right? Where night vision is like, ah, oh, useful, like, I don't know, every fourth fight, something in total, I don't know, less than that. <laughs> it's useful, not very often. It's more like, I guess, I guess dark vision is more useful at certain scenarios, right? Certain quests, yeah. So I think that I have the rows. I do value them higher than high elf, okay? Because I think the darkness spell is better than what the high elf get. And do I value it over the movement speed and a little bit stealth bonus or so on? I probably don't. So it's kind of where I feel that they are in the middle here. All right. And then if I bring up the draw, I would... There's a little bit of human in them. I would value the wood elf probably slightly higher than that. High elf, yeah. So I was an early, right? So it's kind of like... Mm, yes, I think I just have the second thing. I don't think they benefit that much from the human half part of it. Let's talk about human now then, because the humans, uh, the best part of being a human, right, is the versatility bonus thing of your like your skills. And you also have a general pretty good with a lot of stuff, right, a lot of items or whatever. But I think I value humans um, here somewhere. Where they are, okay, that bones thing is pretty good, but that is not what these people have, right? And I guess you could argue that half draw spells is better or something. But I don't really, I don't really value that, the cantrip spell, that the wizard, high elf wizard. I mean, honestly, no, I probably value wizard, like that, yeah, the, that one spell lower than being a human. And I, hmm, do I value, honestly... I kind of think that, yeah, I don't, I don't actually value that spell that much. I hate this thing, but I think I probably value that somewhere here, probably. <laughs> yeah, I really don't value that that much, I feel. I really don't value that much, I feel, yeah. <laughs> that, it's like, hey, the yeah, high uh, is even worse. Yeah, I don't value that much. It's like, okay, this I feel is fair. Okay, let's go on. Okay, now let's talk about Tiefling. Okay, Tiefling, I found pretty powerful. Maybe I'm biased, because in my second playthrough, I'm playing a Paladin, Serial, Tiefling. But man, this is some good stuff, seriously. So, Tieflings have a lot of skills, 
when you record right they have different like two different spell skills whatever uh, depending on your sub race so the more about that right we'll break down here but basically if you start with the asmodos tiefling they have uh, they can like create like a fire lighting which isn't very useful i feel this is the first ability it's like at the torch thing it's like uh, it's okay you can throw it to start fires though so that has utility to it so it's not useless second ability is this like counter thing if they attack or whatever that one is pretty good that one is powerful if you attack or so on if you're in in the face of them right and the last ability is the darkness exact thing as row has and then every tiefling right has a little bit dark vision uh, reducing fire damage so on right so I think that straight up the Asmodus Tiefling is better than the Droll, right? Because they have the same, like the best spell thing, Darkness, but, all, all, but the other spells are better too. So I read at that point, I would put them over here, right? Or, I mean, you can have Draw here. So at least here, I would say, that they're better than Draws, uh, just straight up, right? And then the other two, uh, what are they called? Um, not Mephisto. Mephistoless? <laughs> oh, they have uh, also two burning stuff, flame thing. Uh, they have the magic grab thing that the Gitanki also has. That's pretty useful. They have like a flame thing going on. I think they're weaker than the smallest ones. Uh, like that. And then we have the serial ones, which I'm playing as. I made my bias then. You can leave a comment below. I'm biased, right? But I think they're actually very powerful. Because, so, the serial ones, they're basic... Uh, passive or the passive activated racial passive thing is to get a higher intimidation and performance thing so i'm playing this like really high charismatic paladin right and yeah i am scoring so high all the time but right? on my like devotion you know persuasion charisma plays performance plays so i find that ability incredibly useful and i think that like i said in my class video you have to also include you know like npc actions right you said the rogue can kill a lot of NPCs and get quests done by that. If you're playing as the bard or as a paladin, I would argue these are the two best NPC classes, right? They can, you know, con converse, right, and get through quests and so on, right, by your target people. And if you then play the serial paladin, of course, or other serials, or I mean other classes, but anyway, your point, if I play serial as a bard or as a paladin or whatever, right, I am now performing even better, right? And that kind of is my min max second picture. I'm playing serial paladin, trying to always just not fight anything, like trying to just talk my way through every fight. Is my point. Then the serial bone is very powerful. Then you also have this thing, this like searing blade attack, like a kind of burning spore attack uh, on level three. And then you get this like holy light burning attack on level five. They are actually quite powerful. You actually do high damage with that. It's like your highest level three damage attack if you're a paladin, whatever. So I think that the serials are the best tiefling. That's why I mean max right with my paladin. But I think so. I think that that persuasion ability very powerful. Uh, I think that yeah, and the bit are good. And then they also have you know the fire resistance if you're attacking and so on. So it is arguably the best paladin class. That's probably I would say the most. Um, that yeah, the serial is the best um, uh, synergy paladin. I mean another way to make the video right is to look at synergies instead right that's kind of what i argued earlier of course with the whole half or thing that yes half orcs are amazing as long as you're playing as a monk or whatever right so that is the way i look at it the most i suppose or at least maybe the most but a lot of my you know back here in my head right i am thinking like okay if i'm playing serial oh man that is really good if you're paladin but that's why i made a paladin serial right you know what i mean so i'm thinking out of that okay this thing is very good for this class and that's why the race is extra good, right? Now that being said, I do find that I actually think that I, I think I always kind of put all the 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 tieflings higher. But I do think that Serial is the best one, and then Asmodus, I think that one is better. I have to be better than Rose. Um, Mephistoless, I think, is the weakest one. So I, th I think it's like I can see it going like this: Mephistoless being slightly weaker than Rose. And then, but I can also see Asmodus actually going up here. So let's have a look at the beginning. I think this is, but I, I think especially the Asmodus are better than Rose, right? Because it's kind of the same thing, but better uh, for mo for most parts of the game at least. Let's do the Gitanki. Gitanki are very powerful, right? So first of all, their like proneness is like melee weapon, right? Or kind of fighting that fits of course the main, you know, your companions of Gitanki. 
So they are good as Warstand Barbarian, they're good as Fighter and so on. But the order builds are very powerful. So they basically have a bunch of like magical. I mean, the race is like. Uh, they have, you know, telekinetic powers, right? Sion psionic tactic abilities. But these are very powerful because the fifth one is the same spell the separate Vala can learn, which is like teleport, I guess, basically. Uh, Misty Step is basically teleport, right? Um, the first one is, of course, the Mega Hand thing, which the TV ones can have. You can move around stuff and so on. That can be very useful for some stuff. You can use for stealthing, you can trick some NPCs and so on. That's pretty useful. And the the third one is you have a jump, so you can get way further, which is very useful for some NPC stuff, especially some traps. It's very useful for some fights, because you can actually jump very, very far into it and attack someone, right? So I think the tank also is, like I said, pretty good at being a rogue, actually, in that sense too, right? Because you can use the hand thing, you can stand, you can jump much further and so on. It gives a lot of options, and yeah, and teleporting, it's a little bit redundant though, because then you have both really extra jump and better and teleporting, they kind of do the same thing, <laughs> you know what I mean? A little bit, right? A little bit, they kind of do the same thing. It's like, well, you probably will use teleport or whatever, but I think these are very powerful move abilities, right? And they also are very fitting them as most of the storyline, that they're good warriors, right? Uh, like, you know, as the main girl, she's a fighter, she mentioned barbarian and so on. They're good at these classes, rogue, barbarian and so on. They're not very useful if you're playing a mage, right? They're not very useful if you're playing as a any kind of spellcaster, you know, and any kind of stuff like that, yeah. Any kind of magical abilities, they're not very useful. But I look at them similar to the half orc, right? And I'm gonna put them in, uh, in S tier. They actually have a very powerful abilities. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, they are they are not very useful if you're playing as a spellcaster or a range like a ranger. It's not it's not used as a ranger though to teleport up and so on. Now, as a ranger, they're probably actually also still very useful because even if you don't get any bonus to like your bow, or whatever, really that much because you teleport or so on and high and you can jump really high. So no, I think they're pretty yeah they're pretty useful. Like, they're just useful. It's like a it's a very useful ability, you know. They have they have this focus on like useful stuff around the fighting. That being said, though, they don't make you necessarily do more damage in a fight, perhaps. So maybe they're slightly weaker. Maybe T is better than one because they don't make you like do more damage. But I think they're very powerful. I think they are really ugly, though. <laughs> I would say that. Oh, I can't use this girl. She's so ugly. Uh, it's, it's probably the least. I don't know. It's, it's, it's not there. They're really ugly. Bias wise, I want to put them lower. Like, oh, I want to play with them. Okay. So let's go into the short people, right? Yeah. All the short stacks, right? So we have the dwarf, we have the gnome, and they have, of course, the halflings. So the dwarves are obviously tanky, right? I mean, what can I say here? I think the dwarves are a pretty good general. Uh, race right if you play of course a gold dwarf i mean i said it yesterday in my quick like race stuff right because yeah it's like yeah if you play a tank if you play a barbarian fighter paladin some other builds right you can play druid and so on up there obviously the gold dwarf that has just more health point is like yeah okay you have one more health point per level kind of thing right uh toughness very useful shield dwarf i feel less useful we can use a little more um stuff like armor and so on because it depends a little bit but i mean Shield Dwarf is what I mean, I don't think it's very powerful, because if you're gonna play a Dwarf, you probably wanna play, in my early argument, right, you probably wanna play like a Paladin. So as a Paladin, you're gonna get that armor stuff anyway, so on. I feel that Shield Dwarf, like, I wanna play like a Clara, I don't know, uh, it's something like that, you wanna play something that can't use shields, right? Or, or then you play the Shield Dwarf, so you can use it anyway. I don't believe in that stuff. <laughs> I don't believe in diversity, right? I believe in like super, super good at one thing. Yeah, mostly at least. So I think Shield Dwarf is way less useful than being a Gold Dwarf with is a lot more health, right? And then of course the Durgar, possibly. They have uh, Night Vision and uh, what are Illusion Prof, right? Yeah, Illusion and Charming and so on. Yeah, and uh, of course very good Night Vision. And then, yeah, and of course, the dwarf has, you know, sisters has poisoning and so on. Right? Um, so now then, the dwarves, and this is true for all these classes here, right? all the races, I mean, all the races, all these tiny ones, they walk short, right? I think it's a pretty massive drawback, uh, as obviously I value wood elf quite highly, right? So, if you look at toughness dwarf, 
I find them very powerful right you now. Uh, having more health points, having more assistance, having a natural prof for some of the items or weapons, I mean, do you want to have as like a tank, right? Makes them, you know, excellent barbarians, right? When you have the frenzy going on and so on. Makes them excellent, of course, paladins and uh, so on. So, I mean, it's obvious that this is yet another race um, that is very good at being a, you know, a melee fighter, right? Do I find it better than the orcs? No. I think the orcs are better with the crit thing and the, and the endurance thing. So I think they are strictly, not always, but very often at least, worse than health orcs, right? Straight up. But it's a pretty good uh, race thing. The shield dwarfs I mentioned, I don't find it very high at all. I think they're much worse. I don't think you need that. I think they are kind of in the C tier. I would argue it's the worst in the game, probably. I put them actually in the trash. I think it's probably the worst. Um, and then Nightborn, they have very good eye vision. They're good at like, the ranger and so on. They don't move that much anyway, you know what I mean? They got a little bit of resistance. Um, and they're not immune, but they have higher protection against like charming, illusions and so on. Which actually is a pretty good thing. And also, again, useful as tanks and so on. And they have very good night vision. And I probably put them somewhere up here. I think they're probably better than humans, but I don't think they're better than the Asmo. I guess a good comparison, are they better than the Drow? Their passive ability, is that better than the, the Blindness Darkness spell? It probably is. They have the same kind of dwarf thing. But they can move shorter though. You can't just ignore that they have uh, shorter movement things. So they're probably somewhere here, I feel. Uh, we, start, we start over here, I feel it's pretty fair. Let's, not, let's move to the next short, guys. So Halflings has this amazing passive, right? So they have two different sub races, but no matter what one you pick, you're gonna get this called Lucky. So Lucky is arguably like the best passive in the game, where if you roll a one or whatever, you get the re-roll. It's really, really good, right? This is like one of the best things ever. Uh, and the next thing is Brave, which is like, oh, you get frightened, you can breathe. It's pretty good, okay? It's pretty good. It's kind of like, you know, it's some abilities. But I think that, yeah, Lucky is very powerful. Uh, I said it in more video, but obviously the Halflings, again, they're slower, right? They can't move as far and so on. But they can, of course, you know, uh, shoot or whatever, right? So Halfling fits like that, the, again, right? Half fits like that the reverse Half Orc, right? The Half Orc is very, very good at playing, you know, the, the melee guy, right? Halflings are not good in melee, but of course, Lucky is extremely good if you play any spellcaster or like a ranger, any, any range-based uh, spec, right? So, if you want to be a range-based spec, Halfling is arguably the best one you can be. It reminds me of, here's Mathematic 2, you know, play that game with the Halfling, it's the first character with the, the sling. <laughs> the, yeah, the wizard, in the wizard, uh, the wizard team, you have the classic Halfling, right? With the, the sling thrower, yeah. Uh, very very powerful and I think that this is arguably the best range thing uh, now that being said I don't think the sub races are equally good at all because the second one uh, is um, how say it? it's like some resistance checks strong heart has you know poison this is does feel as good the other one has stealth bonus which is much more useful especially playing like a ranger halfling and so on and you play a stealth halfling so I think that the light foot one is, is a lot better. So let's look at it here. So I will I will put like light foot the halfling in S tier. I really do think it's yeah. It's like I do feel they're at the best. Um, it's like yeah, the best range race probably. And it's just really good. Like it's really yeah, it's just a fantastic ability there. Um, but like I said, right, I would put them in not very good if you're playing a melee character, but that's the point, right? you, you don't want that, right? Here, here in this list, we think like the best specs, right? Yeah, best specs. Uh, they're good bars so on for, you know, yeah, classic halfling, right? the symbol here. So, that's pretty good. I don't find the light foot as good. I think it's like a quite a worse passability they have. Um, but is it like that insanely much worse to put them like way further down? I can't have them in the same tier, but I don't think it's like ass. It's like, it's like a, it's a trash tease because they have another pass, you know, the second passive isn't that big. No, because they both have like lucky, right? Yeah, they both have lucky and brave. They both have like a really good passives. Um, but it's like, yeah, I do it again. I do feel that the poisons, the poison resistance isn't that useful. It's, it's somewhat useful, but not as much as the other thing. So 
I think this is fair, right? Yeah, I think I think the halfling is very, very good, and the second thing is like, uh, it makes sense the worse, right? So lastly then, we have the normal of the tiny ones, and they have cunning, which of course is very similar to lucky, right? You have like, uh, oh, I can do another roll kind of thing, right? However, this one is more focused, you know, on like, NPC, I guess, I guess. Not, not only, you can have traps, so on too, uh, yeah, but not only, only, but basically, yeah, you get like an, an extra advanced troll, right? Charisma, so on. I think this is very powerful. I find it extremely powerful, right? If you're playing as uh, the you know uh, the paladin or whatever, the bard of course, the obvious gnome, kind of typical gnome, sort of bards or whatever. It's very very powerful. I mentioned earlier, right? That I really like playing tiefling, paladin, serial, right? Or oh, I get a higher charismatic moves, you know, intimidation, so on. It's very powerful. And I think this here is almost similar. That if you play the gnome, you have one of the best. If not the best, right? NPC like interactive bonus, right? Something like that. So, but it kind of looks. If I say like, <laughs> wow, well, look at it. Now, what I mean, if the half orc is like the best melee class, right? And arguably then the halfling is the best range class, for like range or whatever, uh, race thing. Then the gnome is the best. You know, non-fight like outside combat, right? But you know, it's good for <laughs> all the stuff. Yeah, it's good for the for the NPC interaction, right? Mostly, but it's really powerful, right? And I think that yeah, this is like the best one or second best one for NPC stuff. So they have three different sub races, and, and rock gnomes are probably the one that is like okay, this is kind of the same thing. You know, improve improve NPC stuff, whatever. But I don't feel history checks are that common in the, in the game, but it is kind of the most fitting one, of course, for us gnomes that you know talking to animals, right? Is also again fitting into the NPC stuff because now you can talk to the animals of the NPC part. So yeah, they're a little more versatile, right? But uh, it is a really good power there because now you have, like I said, right? You have improvement of the charisma and everything, right? You have the cunningness that improves all your that stuff. Now you also have the animal stuff, even if you're not an animal speaking normal, right? So now you have that in with your class. So this can be really, really useful. So if you want to play like the NPC master, I would say that. Yeah, I think Forest Gnome is more valuable than History Checks, but they're both pretty good at that. But I mean, either of them are good at like NPC stuff, right? And that's kind of where I feel that the Deep Gnome is the least useful one, because the Deep Gnome is basically a draw, right? So they use got better Ivy so Yeah, they can do a little more stealth, so they're a little more... If you want to play like a Rogue Gnome, and then you have Disney. But here I feel that they're not very useful, right? Because... And I want to put out strongly here, uh, because... If you're playing that, you know, persuasive gnome, right, or a persuasive whatever, but you're playing a persuasive gnome, very rarely do you need to do stealth checks, right? Because stealth checks, for me at least, is where I want to, like, okay, I'm playing the rogue or something similar, but I play the rogue, or most obvious example, and I want to assassinate, you know, the boss, right, and so on. Or I want to enter this town, kill these guys, you know, yeah, yeah, right. But if I'm playing a gnome, where I have a lot of NPC bonus, right, I probably can use talk to the boss you know what i mean that's the whole point right so i feel that the, the, the deep gnome their bonus for stealth is just kind of like oh it's kind of like counteracts the other thing and it comes back to my earlier you know point right it comes to economy that right that it's better being really good at something usually in a game than being good at a little bit of everything so i feel this is weaker because you clearly then oh i'm kind of good at this stuff too ah i'd rather have better trolls for you know history or also having the animal stuff, so no, I think this is the weakest uh, gnome. But, anyway, as I end then, yeah, I do find the gnome actually very powerful. I do, I really do appreciate the NPC. Okay, let's, sorry, the, the, the wood. Yeah, I find the forest one the most powerful. Then I find the rock one somewhere here, probably. I think it's weaker than the cereal, but it's a taffy cereal. Probably stronger than Asmodos, toughness. And then lastly... I think the deeper gnomes are definitely one less tier then, yeah. They kind of weaken down there. We will order it a bit, but is it better than gnomes? I almost think so, because I really do value... I, I You can kind of hear it, I definitely value the NPC stuff somewhat more than the gnome fighting stuff. So I kind of want to put cunning like that. But I do feel that's not as good. The toughness over that one, I think it's, this is pretty fair. And then rock over wood over draw. I still think so. I mean, the general gnome thing is like so good. And if the gnome is going to be S tier, yeah, this is, I feel fair. Okay, so lastly then, Dragonborn. Lastly, of course, then we have the Dragonborn, right? The Dragonborn can be a bunch of sub races, 
but obviously I won't cover all of that because that is pointless because there's no difference really, right? I mean, obviously no difference, but the difference is that you said you pick an element, right? If you're playing as a blue dragon, you obviously have, you know, you have lightning or you have kind of blue stuff, right? And if you're playing as the red one, you, you, you get fire and you can get fire, right? It's very obvious. So you're going to go into different races here, of course. But how good is this in them? I actually think it's quite underwhelming. So basically, you get a breath, right? So you can do a breathing attack. And that's it, right? And you also get, like, protection from that spell, right? Or that element uh, of your color. But it's not very... The breath thing isn't powerful enough, I guess, compared, I feel, you know, to, like, the other stuff. Like, is it better than a darkness spell? Not really. Is it that much better than, like, the, the you know, the, 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 uh, the tiefling, serial, like, burning smite thing? Not really. It is better than them. But the thing is that, if compared to them, the serial, right? So the serial has, like I said, the, the burning smite thing, right? The breath isn't much better than that, depending on, so that it's, it was much better because it hit enemies. But it isn't that much better. And then you have the other benefits, right? Of playing as uh, the serial tiefling. And that's kind of how I feel it goes for all of them, right? Is it better than, like I said, the draw? Because the draw has two different spells. And then they also have other passives. Because really, the dragon born, they don't have any, you know, they don't have any boons, right? They don't have any boons at all. They only have the breath and, again, the element the protection, right? So there's no benefit for any weapons really or stuff like that. So their, their breath have to, you know, really do high damage. Really high damage. And it doesn't do that, right? It is not enough, basically. It's not enough. Your breath attack is far below the damage it needs to be, I would say, to, you know, make up for your lack of whatever, right? weapon proficiency, defense, blah, 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 and so on. Or they don't have night vision either and so on. So they, they, don't, or they don't move faster or... I don't, I don't, I don't think this ability makes up it basically right at all. Really, no, it, it's, it's damage is way too low. Um, simply put it right. It's a little bit cool though because obviously because you can pick so many different colors, you obviously get access to you know like some specific systems here. Like silver can have ice protection or cold. I mean, which is not common in the game. So. You, if you're very specific, like, oh, I want to play a silver dragonborn paladin, so I got, like, you know, ice protection. They have some very unique kind of combos, I guess. But, yeah, the attack itself is always equally weak. In the end, I do find them really bad. They're almost really trashed here. Honestly, the dragonborn is probably the worst. Um, the dragonborn is probably the worst race in the game because, yeah, it, it is probably the only, I would honestly say it's the only trashed here. Um... The racial thing. Re really, honestly, because... You know, the more I think about it, it's like, yeah, that fire breath thing, or whatever, ice breath, it, it, it is not good enough, right? Like I said, a, a one fire breath ability, compared to having, like, three other fire abilities, uh, just from that alone, right, compared to Tiefling, that is not good enough. And then, even more so, right, again, Tiefling also has better fire as, uh, they have Night Wish, um, uh, and so on, right? <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it is way better. And is it better than, for example, the can trip spam ability from the the high elves? No, I don't think so. Is it better than the humans with other build? No, I don't really. So. Is it better than like the gnomes with their amazing NPC stuff or the you know the the, the roles for the half links? Definitely not. Is it better than like the half orc increased damage and so on? No, it isn't, right? I I, I honestly I think that Dragonborn is. Um, yeah, I think Dragonborn is probably the the trash. <laughs> what do you guys think? But I feel the Dragonborn here. Yeah, but I'm gonna grab them here. Yeah, I think Dragonborn is probably the only like real. I think Dragonborn is the, is a trash race. Seriously, yeah, they have all these options. But at the end of the day, right? No matter what option you pick, you you, you get a breath attack that is not very powerful. And like, all other races have a much better abilities than that breath, right? And the rest isn't good either. The only thing good with Dragonborn is that they're the only race they can have like cold rests or whatever. Yeah, they have a specific racial stuff they can gain, but it's only useful at very certain places, right? And again, the breath is just far too, I think, underpowered to benefit them. And I think about they have nothing else. They have no, no, they don't even have night vision. Yeah, so they are. Pre I think they are the only trash anyways that concludes the video hope you guys liked it i always put over that again the beginning right 
I kind of cover the idea of uh, cessation. I think interesting, and I and I like to do stuff. And I did earlier with like my Fallout videos or earlier this year. I like to think about you know video games in that kind of context, right? Of like, okay, I'm gonna create a character with a good combo of whatever class and race and so on or whatever, right? And I think about this stuff a lot. I was like, okay, but how do I like min max it? And usually, almost all the games, min maxing is like where where do I you know get the most benefit, right? And I think that I keep saying it, but I think that step the half orc is a good example of like, okay, this racial thing is useless if you're like a ranger, but whatever. I mean, it's much better if you're a fighter, right? So I think that's almost always is the best way to go. And when I myself work in these kind of games, right, or whatever, or PDF games, I, I always think about that. That's actually step in the last game I worked on. I was very much against having this kind of stuff in that game. I tried to basically make most of the kind of character, right? You know, be more specialized. I didn't want to be interested in having the like, jack of all trades because I don't feel that are usually that useful in the end of the game, right? Um, which of course. And if you're gonna have a jack of all trades, I think that utility is a better way to go with it. Instead of giving them like one in every stat, I'd rather give them an ability that has, you know, high different, you know, like utility right there. I'd rather have that. So again, that I don't think human in this game are particularly good because I'd rather have the utility of, for example, the gnome, right? Gnome cunning uh, is an NPC thing, right? But it gives you high utility in the end, right? Because you can talk your way through, convince that, and if you don't have the forest gnome, you can talk to animals. You know, there's a utility thing, right? So yes, you kind of have a jack of all NPC talks, right? As a forest gnome, but you're so good at it that it gives you all the options, right? So you can see why I like, you know, like a bard uh, forest gnome, you know. I can talk to everyone, yeah, it's super good, right? <laughs> For NPC stuff. Um, but anyway, guys, what do you guys think? Let's comment below, uh, you know, subscribe, and have a great day.